All right, so uh, my name is David Bush, and I have had some problems with the financial aid office in the past. My name is Valentina, and I have had um, some difficulty with the financial aid department in the past. The financial aid department is understaffed and over. Booked. I want to start this off by saying that this isn't a personal attack about anybody who works at the financial aid de department. They are really nice people. Because it's not like people are in the office trying to, you know, stop you going to college. And they're trying to work with you, it's just that there's a lot of red tape to deal with and there's a lot of paperwork. And in the rare times that I've been able to go to the right person at the right time, they've been really helpful and really nice. My problem was just uh, miscommunication with the department. It's just complete miscommunication and disorganization that I've found while trying to go through a financial aid appeal process and other things. My problem with financial aid actually started when filing the FAFSA. It's the free application for federal student aid and with the FAFSA they take all of your financial information from you, your parents or guardians or anybody in your life pretty much um, for a year prior to when you enroll in college and they use that to determine how much federal aid you are given. In 2009 my dad was having trouble finding work and then in 2010 he landed this miracle job as vice president of an engineering and land surveying firm in New York City um, and that lasted for pretty much the entire year and we had a really good year and then on January 1st of 2011, when they stopped looking at the financial information, uh, the company completely dissolved and he got uh, let go of his job with no severance pay, no health insurance or anything. Um, so coming back from winter break, I checked my schedule to see the, you know, my class schedule, my registration, and it was just completely blank. So I was like, oh, I wonder why that's happening. And I looked into it and it turns out I had been put on financial hold um, because my financial aid had been withdrawn. Up till that point my financial aid was A-OK, -okay, it was in check, there was no problems with it, and I was, I was cleared to go. Um, so I went to talk to them about it and I had been randomly selected for the financial aid like checkup that I guess all colleges have to do. And it's basically a financial aid worksheet. It's like a little four page packet um, that you have to fill out, and it's it's like your parents' W twos over again. You have to double check your FAFSA, your FAFSA, basically check that you know the Drexel up and ups are doing their job. Now, usually when this comes down the pipeline, the student's supposed to be notified, um, but the financial aid department never notified me. Um, so when I went down there to talk to them, they gave me this scolding. They're like, "Well, we sent." 15 letters to your home address, and we have sent 17 email con uh, you know, notifications to you. And I had never gotten any of that. And like, they had my right address, they had my email, and I, to this day, do not know what happened. Um, but I never got the word that I was supposed to be doing this worksheet. So here I am, the day before classes start, and I am not registered. And I also owe Drexel, like, all this money that was covered under my financial aid packet, which I now don't have. So when I realized that my financial aid was less than desirable, um, I realized that there was an appeal process that I could go through. So I jumped on this immediately and decided I need more money, I'm going to make this work. So over the next month or so, I actually compiled a 94-page document that I submitted to the financial aid department. Um, just everything we went through, uh, letters from the mortgage company, doctors, uh, unemployment letters, just everything I could possibly get. And I submitted it to them in a big fat manila folder and said, I need more money, please take care of this. And then I waited and kept waiting. And after about like two months of waiting, I asked hello, this is me again, is there anything wrong with my appeal process? And then they looked through it and said, oh, we don't have your parents' W-2 forms. And I said, no, yes you do, I definitely submitted them. They're like, oh no, just keep, just resubmit it. And I said, okay, I'll resubmit it. So I did that, and then waited again. And then it got to the point where instead of waiting and calling, I went there literally every day, knocked on their door, well, you could walk in, but I knocked on their desk like, hi, it's me again, can I have money now? Definitely go on there face-to-face, ask around, you will get someone to help you eventually, but it's going to take you some time and you're going to have to do a lot of legwork. And they'd be like, oh no, you're missing this paper or this paper. And it was just always something. And instead of just looking through it and telling me, this is what you need, and here's a step-by-step -step guide to filling out an appeal, 
I had to sort of like wander through it blindly and because of that I missed pretty much every deadline for it and was put in a financial hole. <sighs> if you have a financial hole put on your account, you will not be allowed to register for classes. Every time I would go with my new set of papers that was missing and say, can you please submit this to the appeal board? The lady at the front desk would kindly tell me, no, uh, we actually just sent them off to be reviewed. They met bi-weekly every Wednesday, and if you missed that deadline due to a missing paper or just anything, you had to wait in another two weeks, and that's a pretty long time if you don't have any financial aid and you have to register for classes. So I went to the financial aid department and, you know, tried to figure this out, and they told me it would take them a minimum of two weeks for them to, like, if I handed all the paperwork in that financial verification packet to them that day, it would take them at least two weeks to give me an answer back. So now I'm not in the position where I can wait two weeks for an answer and then another three weeks to get my aid back. Two weeks of knowing should I put in overtime, should I try to scramble for money, is financially actually going to help me? And I think that that two week estimate was completely off and it turns out it was a good month later until I found out that like, oh, we just got to your file and they were like, oh, well there's a missing, missing document. I was told later on there's always something that's going to be missing that never clears the first time through and it's like this ongoing struggle. Um, and it was really tough waiting for just lost papers when something, if it was more organized, it would have worked well. While I was going through this, I learned about um, the payment plan option that Drexel now has with Higher Education Services. With Higher Education Services, I realized that I only had to come up with about $500 to $1,000 to re-enroll in my classes. So that was still a lot, but enough that like one small grant or loan or something from Drexel could have helped me. Uh, Drexel saw that I owed them about $18,000 instead of $500. And because of that, when I finally got the appeal back after everything, the letter basically said, Hi, we regret to inform you that we couldn't give you any financial aid because we need money to drop student holds. So we can't drop your student hold because we need to drop people's student holds. And I was like, what? No, no, that makes no sense. Just... <sighs> it's really depressing. In the end, I did find someone in the office of the Bursars who was very friendly to me, very helpful, and uh, they made an agreement with me to take the financial hold off of my account for one day um, so that I could register for classes. My schedule would be set and I would be going to classes, I would be enrolled. They did that for me just because my paperwork was turned in and the only thing holding me back was the fact that they could not review it in time. These worksheets are, you know, piles thick. And when you throw yours in there, it goes to the bottom of the pile. And it takes them a long time to sort through this. And it has to change hands so many times, it's just a long, complicated process. So once you're in that situation, it's very hard to get out of, but there are ways to get around it. Find out as much as you can about all of your options before jumping to conclusions and thinking that you're going to have to drop out of school because you don't have money. You gotta talk to people. You gotta go down there and find the right people. Um, don't deal with them only in emails um, because they're, they're way too overloaded and you'll, you'll never be able to get anything done. It took me an entire day um, to register for classes and my problems went beyond the financial aid department because um, at that time you would have to go to these other colleges that make up Drexel University to register for classes individually. And then each time I went to them, I had to clear it with the financial aid department. And every time I went back, they were like, wait, you're on hold, and then I had to explain my situation to them again. No, my hold's being withdrawn for this day so I can register, and this is why, because this paperwork's in the pipeline, and it was held up because I didn't get my notification, because I'm in the verification program, and it's it was just a big nightmare. So I had completely given up hope at that point. I was like, oh great, I can't go back to school because Drexel hates me. And um, I called up my parents and was like, guys, I have really bad news. I don't have money and can't go to school because I don't have money. And then uh, my dad is like this six foot five um, big guy. He's just like, I'm gonna go to that financial aid office and give them a firm talking to. I'm like, oh, okay dad, that sounds great. Just just don't hurt anyone or anything. Cause a lot of noise, find the people with the most mahogany in their offices. Um, in short, the people who know the system, um, who understand the loopholes and how the red tape works, and uh, are able to work with you and work around this uh, these obstructions that the system has right now. It actually worked out really, really well. Having my parents come in is what changed financial aid's opinion of everything, apparently. Because, I guess it makes sense. 
parents pay colleges, colleges want to make parents happy. So um, when my parents came in and did the whole sad thing, like, if she graduates, she'll be the first person in our family to go to college. Please give her money. We want our daughter to have an education in the future. <laughs> They're just like, okay, okay. We do have Perkins loan funding. Ah, do you want a $5,000 loan? I'm like, yes, I've been here every single day for the past six months. I do want a $5,000 loan. Please give it to me. I, I actually still needed extra money, so I had to drop my housing. And they say all freshmen are required to live on campus. So they never said you can drop your housing. Um, if you are in financial need, there can be arrangements made and you can drop your extremely expensive $15,000 a year housing at Drexel. You can get rid of that and find a studio apartment for $300 a month. And it will work. I really wish that I had figured it out beforehand because they told me this a day before I had to get all of my stuff out of the dorms because we were right about to go on winter break and if my stuff was there over winter break and when I came back they would charge me for winter housing. Um, and I obviously couldn't do that. Cue the violins for this part, by the way. Uh, we, like, I ran into my dorm and was just like, Roommate, roommate, I love you. We can't be roommates anymore. Goodbye, my friend. And then just like grabbed all of my stuff, put it in the minivan, and then spent six hours running between residential housing, financial aid, bursar's office, financial aid again, residential housing again, and then the minivan to continue the sad, rainy drive out of Philadelphia. From what I've seen, if you talk to enough people and you make a, a big enough big enough wave and you dig deep enough, eventually you'll find someone who'll be able to work with your situation. They are very good about that. That was all before I made housing arrangements for the winter, so I was homeless at that point pretty much um, if I were to continue going to school. And luckily I have a really sweet boyfriend who lives in Philadelphia and he let me crash at his place. Not everybody has that, so you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you don't know what's going on. What my situation is now uh, they originally gave me that two-week deadline uh, and then maybe another three-week uh, continuance. That was not the case. Um, I'm still on financial hold, which is, and I talk to them all the time, so it's really a testament to how long it takes and how difficult it is to actually get yourself out of financial hold. Do not get in a financial hold because you will go through hell to drop that financial hold. It's ridiculous what you have to go through. You have to pay them everything you owe up front. It, you know, it takes two weeks for checks to clear or something like that. So just don't get yourself in that situation. Um, that was the beginning of the term. We are in week eight, I think of the term. I am still on financial hold, that same financial hold they put on my account after I registered for classes. And it's not like I haven't been pursuing it. I've been down there, you know, every week talking to them. I've been in contact with them emails, they've been working on the papers. To make agreements, figure things out. And to make the agreements, you have so many options, one of which that I found to be the best was higher education services. So that's still what I'm dealing with right now. There are still papers missing. Um, that I didn't know about and I don't think they knew about it until they went through because it changes hands so many times. With higher education services, they put you on a payment plan and they are really forgiving. If you stick to the payment plan, it's 10 months, just pay them a tenth of your bill every month until they will pay Drexel everything you owe up front to keep you in classes and keep you happy. I have to redo my FAFSA like for the third time and every time you, re you redo it, it's always contact information is wrong and you have to go back to Drexel and tell them, look, this is still my contact information and, and, and all kinds of things. And even though I have come a long way to resolving my problems, and in the eyes of a lot of the people there, my problems are like basically, re basically resolved, they're still not at that point where you can get the okay, clear, everything's good and done, and we can take your financial hold off of uh, your account. That is, in, it, in itself is a very rare thing to hear. It takes a lot of work to get to that point. Um, and unfortunately, I fell into the trap. I fell behind. You have your Drexel One account. Check it religiously. Every day. Every other day. Just It takes two seconds to click the check my email tab and make sure that's still a really nice zero. Because it, it takes a while for them to send out the email saying there's been a change to your financial aid and you don't want to wait too long or you'll be put in a hole. I'll be okay, but I'm still gonna have trouble registering for classes in my next term. Um, because of stuff that went downhill, you know, ten weeks ago. And that's just the nature of the beast. And it's mostly the system. 
it is really expensive because the housing is mandatory, the tuition just went up, it's kind of absurd. And you really do need financial aid to be there for you if you're going to make it through the year. And for me, when it came to dealing with financial aid, what I learned very early on was you're going to have to do it yourself. Just know that you can get a scholarship for doing pretty much anything. They have ROTC, academics, athletics, if you do theater, band, if you uh, sing, if you sing in front of people, they will give you thousands of dollars. It's going to require a lot of legwork on your part. It's going to require a lot of talking to people, a lot of, you know, not begging, but a lot of crafty maneuvering. And I understand that there's a lot of work you have to keep singing for the entire year, but they will give you money, and that is how you should go about going to Drexel. Eventually you'll get it done, but it's, it's going to be hard, it's going to take a lot of legwork, but it will definitely um, behoove you to find the right people, um, the people with the power. And finally, just make sure you have all of your options open to you. Talk to the right people, learn as much as you can about everything, and don't assume that you're going to have to drop out of school. You could drop your housing, you could get a Perkins loan maybe, you could qualify for certain things, and even if you don't get in any money from your financial aid appeal, there are still doors open to you and you shouldn't give up hope.